Welcome to uh, a lesson on how to understand all of Mimeo's toolbars. Um, let's just start with uh, the very basic, which is the selection tool. Uh, the selection tool allows me to click and drag things across the screen, much like anything that you would do with uh, PowerPoint. Uh, the button to follow it would be a zoom in. And if you look right at the bottom right of that button, you see a little uh, triangle or an arrow that tells me that I can right click and when I right click it says zoom in zoom out or zoom full zoom full is a real nice button because if you ever zoomed in too far and you just want to be able to see it on your screen it will pretty much figure it out for you um, below the selection tool you'll see the pen feature the pen feature is nice um, I can draw and uh, pretty much uh, write anything that I would really like that came out really thick because of right here um, and you can change the thickness of this pen which is what they call it uh, this is really what the kids would be using in your lesson that they would be walking up to the interactive whiteboard and and doing something with this uh, another nice feature is right here this will change the color of your pen and you can always change the thickness so that it always matches whatever's best for you. Uh, if you. Again, another little arrow which tells me that I can right click and I would get the brush. The brush is a, a nice feature, um, but if you look at it closely, you can see how it's real thick. And uh, when you start moving with it, it actually acts somewhat like a paintbrush. Um, it's, it's just a, a nice... Uh, or a neater way in which you could uh, have kids write up on the board where it's a little bit more like what they would actually see on their papers or uh, if they're drawing something. Um, again, you can you know change the colors uh, to whatever you want just by doing something very simple like double clicking on it or clicking any of the colors that you see down here. Or you could even click on this which is like a a palette of colors um, where you could click any of these colors in here just like double clipping clicking on this or you can hit define custom and find something that you don't have there and, and use that um, so this is all you know a nice little feature uh, same thing applies to the pen as to the brush where I can make something a little bit thicker a little bit skinnier um, but it's it's just it's a nice way for the kids to uh, be able to interact with the board and uh, following that would be a, a text button which is what you see up here um, if I want to type something like uh, welcome to class you'll see that you pretty much get the same things that pop up that you would see in Microsoft Word, I could change the text. You got to highlight first. Got to change the text. You can uh, change the size. You can bold, italics, underline, um, left, mer uh, align left, align center, align right. Um, not a huge deal. Uh, you could even put the bullets in front of it. Um, and then this last one, which is a way of changing the color. It's just a nice, quick way of uh, being able to change uh, your text on the on it. If you want to make it larger or, or smaller, that's fine. Um, see how it automatically kind of goes back to your selection tool, which allows you to move it throughout the the page. Um, it's just it's just another tool. Uh, the highlighter tool here, which is a really nice tool, you can see there's no triangle, so this is all you get. You can pick any color you want, and you can make it any thickness that you would want. And it's a nice thing for you to add to your lessons, and you can see that it's transparent. Highlighter, I always like to go overboard a little bit thicker. And go all the way up and then you can see how it just kind of highlights uh, what you're trying to show people 
one swipe is really the best way otherwise you can see how it gets a little dark um, but all the colors really work and it's just a transparent color that you're going to throw on top of uh, your text really the next shape right here which is a rectangle if you click on it you can see how it gives you a circle with uh, the cross on it it's really like anything that you've done um, this actually already has a color in it when it should be white and you can see the difference here the difference between the two shapes are that one has an outline of blue which they both do and the other one has no fill and the other one has fill when you're doing the shapes the left one is your outline when the one on the right is actually your fill color. So if I change this to this color, you're going to see three different shapes, all with the same border, but all with different fills. Now that's not the only thing that you can do. Since I can right click, I can go into lines. I can draw lines all over the place. I could change the thickness of the lines. I can do different color lines. I can do lines with arrows. I can do lines with arrows on both ends. And these are all kind of nice if you're working with like a coordinate grid or if you put as a background uh, the grid. Um, you can really have the kids work with uh, drawing shapes or uh, working with a graph to show what's going on uh, within that math lesson or just draw an arrow to something that you want to make the kids see a little bit you know clear so you could do rectangle you can do uh, ellipses triangles the right triangles uh, all great things that you could do for teaching ge uh, geometry but the last one which is really nice for like the younger kids is it's called shape recognition and if you want them to draw a circle like this when I let go see how it cleans it up and it gives it the fill that's already over here um, and such so it's just a nice thing for the kids to do try get used to it and um, start working with the shape recognition uh, again you go back to your selection tool these are all things that can be moved not an issue the underneath the highlighter tool you'll see the eraser uh, again the thickness of your eraser is determined by this just like your pen and your brush so if I go all the way to the left you're not going to see a whole lot done if I go to the middle you're going to see a little bit of it starting to erase but not a whole lot but if I go all the way to the right I'm gonna have a nice big piece to erase but when I want to go to here it's not erasing if I go up to the highlighter it'll erase why are these not being erased because these are not um, your brush your pens your highlighters these are all separate graphics that have now been put in there the only way to get rid of those things is to click on it and delete it. You can click and hit delete or you can right click and you can actually hit cut um, and there's a couple other things that you could do. The um, the paint, this is the object fill. Um, the object fill is, an, is a nice thing if you want to fill uh, like your shapes a different color you can see that it's not going to change the border for you so if I wanted to change this to a nice lime green all I click is the fill button go over to the shape click fill it's done uh, if I don't like that color and I'm trying to look for like a you know this this pink up here and I can't remember where I got that color I take this eyedropper come right up here 
see that that little circle is filled with pink click on it and now my paint bucket comes up and it allows me to fill anything that I want pink okay I skipped this real quick because this is a an insert button which is a lot of fun and can really make any lesson that you create uh, that much more valuable the insert file um, there it is okay so the picture that I picked was a joker and you can see how I can rotate it when I insert a picture or any graphic you're gonna see that green little bar and that green or that green little circle and you're gonna see next to a three or four circles that allow me to spin something or rotate it uh, clockwise or counterclockwise um, which is always really nice because you can get it exactly where you want and how you want it um, but if there's four white circles that tells me that I can make it smaller or larger and the great thing about Mimeo compared to some of the other things that you might work with is that Mimeo keeps it proportioned so if uh, this was three inches by five inches this goes to two inches this has to still be about three inches um, so it's going to still look right and not look like you kind of squished it in some uh, some way. Uh, so again, you know, you want to sit there and, you know, work with your colors. And I like the colors that are in here. I can't find those. I click on the shapes that I want. I want these colors. Just a nice, real simple way of getting what you want quickly. Uh, that eyedropper is really nice touch that Mimeo's put in here. Um, if you keep going down, you'll see that there's a transparency button where I can make this shape right here transparent or somewhat see-through, which is nice if I, you know, want to make a really nice highlighted objective box or um, make this one really transparent and kind of just you know give it a little bit of a design feature um, so it's it's just really nice features where you, when you have that but some of these things don't even light up unless you actually have you know uh, something clicked so I clicked on one of the lines and I can change that line to a dash uh, I could change this line to you know, little squares, um, just nice features that you have here when you click on stuff. So sometimes when you want to do something and it's not lit up, it's because you didn't click on the object that needs to be. Um, again, I, I changed the border around the outside to that dash look, which is nice. You can always make it bigger, smaller, but it's just a nice little touch. I'm going to, you know, click on this, add a little transparency. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you what I can do with that later. Leave that right there. Just make it a little bit bigger. Okay. 